Hey guys, how you doing? Kevin M. Buck here. Today I am going to show you how to play the song Sleepwalk by Santo and Johnny. Um, I think there's a lot of discrepancies out there as to what chords are being played. Uh, I don't see a lot of good tabs and a lot of the videos have mistakes. So hopefully you'll search through enough videos and come to this one. And you can stop searching on the dark web for tabs. I'm going to walk you through this now. Okay, um, so let's go through it. Let me uh, first. I'll talk to you, uh, and you know there are two two versions. One is um, uh, the Perry Como show, and another is uh, the one where you see them playing it on Dick Clark. I'm gonna uh, play along with both of those and uh, explain to you what Johnny's doing, so you could play it exactly the way Johnny plays it. I'm gonna try and. Uh, enable you to play it exactly the way you hear the original song, but I encourage you to do your own thing like Brian Setzer does or uh, Or something like that. So the only thing is the Dick Clark version. I believe uh, they are finger syncing Kind of like I get accused of doing in my Metallica covers, but um, But we could still learn a lot from watching Johnny's fingers in that finger sync. So uh, let me go through those uh, those things for you really quick the song is basically your typical oldies uh, one six four five chord progression in C, uh, which is interesting because uh, was it like 1959? It's like after they killed rock and roll, where um, Jerry Lee Lewis was uh, with his cousin and he was gone, and Elvis went to the uh, military, and uh, Little Richard got into God, uh, Eddie Cochran in a car accident, uh, Buddy Holly, and um, Richie Valens. Anyone hear the song and they think, Oh, my Richie! Not my Richie. Remember that uh, movie? Well, nonetheless, I, I digress. Uh, let me show you the song. So it's a C, A minor, F minor, to a G. So, but the thing is, is if you watch uh, Johnny's fingers in these videos, Johnny plays his C chord, uh, his C bar chord with his thumb on the bass, and then holds the other notes like this. So I don't think he's getting to the high E. So it's basically to the A minor. So it's basically your, five, uh, your, your fifth fret. Uh, you're barring the top three strings on five. Then you have the seventh fret on the D string or your pinky and the seventh fret on the A with your third finger and your thumb on the bass. A minor. Then it's uh, a lot of discrepancies over this chord. He's actually hitting an F minor um, and then the next time he's hitting an F major and then for the verse it's F minor the whole time I'll, I'll walk you through it. You'll see what I mean. And then for the G major. He's playing a G7 This fingering of a G7 here, so uh, I think the D string may be muted in that I'm not sure though, so uh, I'll play along with it so you'll see what's going on, but here's your verse Oh, and it's in 6 8 so essentially uh, if you want, you could just count one, two, three, four, five, six, and that would make up each bar. So here's how I would count it and play the intro. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Um, and again, it's interesting that they use a minor four chord here. It's an F minor. So uh, it's interesting that you could play F minor. If I think about the key of C, the relative minor is A minor. And in A harmonic minor, you could actually play an F minor with that G sharp note, F minor and F major. Actually, both work in the key of um, A harmonic minor. So I know, I'll, I'll get to it. I know, you don't need to hear all about the theory. But it's good to learn a little bit about where some of that comes from. So uh, it goes C major, A minor, F minor, G7. The second time, I believe he's playing C major, A minor to F major. To G7. Um, here I will play it, uh, I'll play along with it with the Perry Como version, uh, which you could find on YouTube. It's a live version here, so uh, watch me play along with it. <laughs> Now it's F minor every time. C major, F minor, C major, A minor, F minor, G major, G7, sorry. Now 
Now it's F major. Now, did you see the difference? Right there. F minor every time except for those two times. Just right before the verse starts. C to F to C. F major, now to F minor. Now Johnny just goes to a C. And he stays on the C in this version here, which is like the original version. F major, to F minor, to G7. Let me stop right there and explain this. Now, a lot of people, so you have to watch, before the verse starts, he plays F major to G7. Every other time, it's an F minor. That's where I think people, what people get wrong a lot of the time. Now, in this last part, where it's um, F major, F minor, C major, uh, the second time, it goes F major, F minor, to G7 for four bars. Now, a lot of people feel like it goes... Flat. It does not go to B flat. Johnny does not go to B flat. Johnny stays on G7 the whole time. Um, on the on the on the steel guitar, on the pedal steel, the lap steel, whatever you want to call it. Santo is playing. Uh, he's playing. So I, I think a lot of people get that wrong. Um, Johnny's just playing a G7 chord. And then Santo plays the B flat. So, uh, quick thing about that: you can play a B flat triad over the G7 chord because the B flat ends up being a flat third or a sharp two, sharp nine, and then the other notes are our chord tones of the G7. So uh, it's kind of an old jazz hole trick where you could play a major triad every three frets above the root: D flat, E major. All those triads could work, could all work over a G7. Um, something like that. It's like maybe an old saxophone type thing. So uh, basically, when when you're playing this B flat major notes over the G7, it makes it a G7 sharp nine chord. So it gives you an altered dominant sound for that G. But the guitar, Johnny's just staying on G7 that whole time. So that's another thing that I think we need to discuss. Um, so there you have it. After that, it's going to come right back to the verse. And um, let, me, let me play through that, and I'll, uh, I'll finish this up for you. F minor, G7, C major, A minor, F minor. G7, C, it's an F minor, now let me explain that to you, so it's um, C major, A minor, he holds the F minor chord, and now for the G, G7, what he plays is the, uh, these notes, two G7s before the last three chords, and I'll show you those last three chords too. A lot of people don't know what those are. But for this, um, and for this, and this is what I think he does in the in, in the original version, is he plays um, what looks like a D minor, like a D minor six is actually a G, G9 chord, but he plays like a G9 chord. So let me explain these notes uh, that he's hitting here. It's a D note on the low E with your second finger, and then um, a, a 10th fret of the G string, that F note, and then the 10th fret of the B string, that A note. He's hitting those three notes together, and then to the G7. So that's what he's doing um, after he holds this F chord. And now the last three chords, if you listen to it, Thank you. 
What I think uh, Johnny's doing on these last three chords now are a C6 to a G flat half diminished or minor seven flat five, and then to another version of a C6 chord. So that's the end that I think a lot of people don't don't hear. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I think it is. So um, really quick, we got a C6. I'll 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 walk your hand through a lot of this, and and don't worry, I'm gonna go through all the Santos parts as well. Uh, but I want to make sure that you understand what's going on with the chords here on the guitar, since I'm assuming you play guitar, electric guitar. So here is um, the eighth fret of the low E string, the C note, and then the seventh fret of the D string with your first finger, that A note, then your pinky on this E note on the ninth fret of the G string, and then the eighth fret of the B string with your third finger. We're going to try and hold those together. That's a C6 chord. And then... Uh, on the A string, 9th fret, D string, 10th fret, G string, 9th fret, B string, 10th fret. A little zigzag. This is a G flat half diminished, also known as a G flat minor 7 flat 5 chord. So, and what's interesting about a G flat minor 7 uh, flat 5 chord is it works in the key of G, and so does the key of C, so you could borrow that chord from that key and gives you like a C Lydian type sound. But what's also interesting is it's the same notes as a C6 chord. C6 with a, with a sharp 11 or whatever. But nonetheless, look how close those chords are. So basically, if I take this chord, this G flat half diminished, and I take my index finger and I move it down to C, now it's a C6 chord. But I think what Johnny's doing is he's bringing this third finger and he's moving it down to the A string. So that's the last chord. So we've got a C6, G flat half diminished, to a C6. So watch me play along to this ending one more time. Got me? Excellent. So uh, I, was, I was, you know, you could watch Johnny's fingers in some of these. That's how I know how he's holding the chord like this, and, and you can see what he's doing. But that's very, very deceiving when you watch people's fingers like that. And uh, like I said, the Dick Clark version, I'm going to go through that again here really quick. Uh, because even though it's a finger sync, he's doing different chords. So I think maybe the fact that Johnny had to play this song a million times, maybe he jazzed it up and used a couple different voicings uh, for some of those chords. But what I just went through, that's the original version. That's what he does on the Perry Como show there. So, um, and what's interesting, if you look at uh, Sando and Johnny, um, I mean... I, I mean, I'm not sexually attracted to men. I mean, hopefully I won't get canceled for saying that. But uh, these guys are not the, the prettiest looking guys, in my opinion. But it just goes to show that you could be, uh, if you could come up with a, with a kick-ass song, uh, you, you, can, you, can become, you can become super huge. I mean, granted, this is 1959. Uh, but, uh, but you could see how, how uh, awesome this song is. And, and there, people still... People still um, still love this the song, so I'm gonna go and uh, play along with the uh, the other version of uh, Sleepwalk from the Dick Clark show, and uh, let me explain a couple things that he's doing here that's um, slightly different. Uh, when you watch his fingers, and I know he's he's not plugged in, so he's, they're obviously finger syncing. But I think it's interesting when you watch. Uh, a lot of people watch this this version the most, and I think they get confused and. Um, and, and, and play it like this, but instead of the C major, uh, Johnny's playing a C6 chord uh, shape, uh, then it's A minor, F minor, G7, and then remember the second time through it's, uh, well in this case it's going to be C6 to A minor 7 to uh, F major. So remember, uh, he hits an F major right before the verse starts every other time it's F minor. That's, that's what gets really confused in the song. Um, I can't, this is a little sharp, the Dick Clark version, we, we watch him on this, this show with Dick Clark, but, um, but I'm going to go through it anyway. Yeah, no, I won't tune up, but, so this, if you watch his fingers, it's a C6, F minor, to the same G7, C major, A minor, now it's F major, to G, now it's all going to be the F minor for the verse when that F comes, so now it's F minor. G7. C6, sorry, every time in this, if you watch his ver uh, fingers there. So let's 
just go through this here. C6. Now it's F major. See, right before the verse, he does that with a C major. That's that's what I'm hearing there, okay? And that's what makes the song really tricky. Now it's F minor. So there's only those two times that it was F major, not F minor, right? So C6. So he spices it up with um, with that C6 fingering. I don't know if he's trying to impress somebody with that chord because nobody can probably hear him anyway. But... No, so that was that ending. And then you go to C, F major. Uh, then it was just C. Now, uh, if we continue on here, uh, in in changing from that C chord, um, he's playing a regular C this time. So the last time he just played C, he went F, C. Then it goes to the bridge. In this version, he's playing C6. then to a C major. And in this, you hear the C major open chord, well, you don't hear it, but that's what he's playing, with the G in the bass. And then what's interesting is he's playing a C9. C uh, a C9 shape is what you could hear him doing here, uh, or what you see him doing there. And that's uh, interesting if... Uh... So... So uh, when you play the um, this, G, it's a G minor six chord, which works as a C nine. But this um, this C nine is 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 like a C seven chord. So it's kind of moving us to the key of F. You could look at this as a secondary dominant of the key of of F, um, and uh, and and that's kind of interesting. So he's from C. And that brings us into the app. So that's a very interesting little uh, little maneuver there. Um, I look at this as the five chord of, of the key of F. That and so now this next part could you kind of look at it like they moved to the key of F, or you could just kind of look at that as like a secondary dominant to get to your F chord. So uh, this is your bridge section on the um, Dick Clark version. He's playing um, fingerings are uh, on the it's F to. F to F minor. So again, it's a F to F minor. And then that first time he did the C to the C9 chord again. And then the second time it's uh, F major to F minor. But watch, he does, inst instead of just holding the G7 for four bars, he actually is going to uh, change this up. He goes... Oh, and really quick, on that F, instead of going F minor. That was the first time. Now the second time he goes F major. So instead of the F minor chord, he's actually playing a D half diminished chord. So uh, I talked about this chord before as a G flat, but now he's playing it here as a D half diminished. And what's interesting about a D half diminished is that it has an F minor in it right here. So it's. No, sorry. And then for the. Um, uh, the, now, so it's basically F major, F minor. He's replacing that F minor with this D half diminished, and then he goes to um, instead of playing D, if I, we take a look at this video. So in one of the versions, he plays um, uh, uh, the G seven. That's what he did um, on the Perry Como show. This time, he's just holding this G7 the whole time. So he's F major. So 
you see that there's a slight difference in, in the voicings there, but basically it's all the same. And then, um, the ending. Sorry, the ending is a C6, A minor. Now it holds the F minor. To a G7, to another G7. And then the ending chords are the same. So I think the main the main difference in his fingering right there was just that in the uh, Perry Como version he did a G7 up here as a as a G9 or a D minor six. In th in this version of Sleepwalk, when you watch the Dick Clark, he's holding the G7 twice before he goes to those last chords. Okay, so. There, uh, there you have it. Basically, those are the uh, those are the chords to Sleepwalk. Now, uh, I'm sure you want to learn Santo's part, so let me go back and uh, I'll play along with the Perry Como version uh, with uh, Santo. But um, let me explain to you uh, what's going on here. Is I mean, I could use a slide, and I could go, but I can't really get the harmony right unless I kind of move. That's gonna be hard to do. I could change the tuning of my guitar and maybe make it work. But what I'll do here is I'll just show it to you in standard tuning without the slide. Um, so uh, let me uh, let me explain how it goes. Um, I'll play along with it a little bit first. C like this. This is live, I believe. Okay, so the beginning is like a C shape like this, but he's hitting this C note on the third fret of the A string. Then the fifth fret of the B and the G string, you're gonna slide into it. And then for the A minor, he's gonna hit an, you could hit an open A string. And then the fifth fret of the high E and the fifth fret of the B string, they're in your A minor chord, so. And then the next notes are notes of the F. To the notes of the G. So that's the first fret of the B, the first fret of the G, to the third fret of the B, to the fourth fret of the G. So um, here is the uh, here is the beginning. And uh, that's what he's doing to start. And that little high part, I mean, if I used a slide, it'd be pretty easy to go. It's basically 15 to 17 on the high E to the 24th fret, if you have one of those, to the 19. You could use a slide. Get that a little better, sorry. But that's going to be hard to play. Or you could try one of these, 15 to 17, bending the 22 up to the 24, and then this. And that's going to be hard to do as well. So, um, when I was doing this in my band, I would maybe just cheese out and do it an octave lower. Uh, if you want to do an octave lower, that would be 8 to 10 on the B, to 10, 12 on the high E, to 7 on the high E. If you wanted to hear those notes, you could go 15 on the high E to 17 on the high E. And then harmonic on 5 of the high E, harmonic to seven so or I like to just try and maybe so that's how that's you know you got to make do you're not playing lap steel here you're not playing steel guitar so you have to figure out a way to do it so that that part's a little weird but that's what he's doing there um, and so uh, this part is gonna the next part is gonna go 13 on the B sliding down to eight Uh, and then the next part here, I used to, uh, is six on the B to seven on the G. And then you're gonna wanna add the eighth fret uh, of the A. He's hitting those three notes, moving it up a whole step, then a half step, and then back down a half step. So uh, again, that's uh, the sixth fret of the B, the seventh fret of the G, the eighth fret of the A. And then you move up to the eighth fret of the B, the ninth fret of the G, the 10th fret of the A. And then you move that up to the 9th fret of the B, the 10th fret of the G, and the 11th fret of the A. 
And then you move that back down a half step to eight on the B, nine on the G, and 10 on the A. But, and that's how that sounds, right? That part. But what I like to do is kind of do the bend, a bend here, like, and, but it's hard to do it with three. Because this, each one of those are going to have to be bent a half step. So if you you can do whatever you want with that, but that's what's going on there. I, maybe I'll just slide it. So here comes that part there. I mean, a little vibrato. So the second time it's the same thing. You just hit the note twice. And then you're going to go back to 8, 9, 10. That's going to be 5 on the B, 8 on the B, 5 on the B, 5 on the G, 7 on the D. Okay? And then it's uh, the 5th fret of the middle two strings. And then you're going to slide into it. Actually, we can move that here. You kind of just hear that E note on the fifth fret of the B. So it's five on the D, five on the G together. Those two, and then you'll slide in the five on the G, five on the B. And you'll just hit that. And then you're gonna do the um, that lick we talked about. Right, I think, let's hear. And so again, this is this is an F major. I believe that's an F major when he's sliding that up there, okay? Um, and I think that was in the in the beginning as well. So let's continue on from that. It's just again. Second time it's just this note twice and then um, and then it kind of just comes back to the C. It doesn't stay on the E this time. It's got it. So there's a slight difference there, and that's back to the C. Fifth fret of the B, fifth fret of the G for the C. So it's so hopefully you'll be able to make out all of that. What was going on there? Okay. Um, if you want here, maybe I'll go back and I'll play it one time for you. Okay, so now the next part. So let's talk about that. Um, fifth fret of the G to the tenth fret of the B. Now you could bend the eighth fret of the B to make it sound a whole step higher, like the tenth fret, or you could hit the eighth fret of the B and slide it. 
like that, or... And then it's going to go two slides from 10 to 12 on the high E. So do that twice. 10 on the high E to 8 on the high E to 9 on the B. Okay? And then it's going to do uh, 10 to 12 to 10 on the E to 8 on the E, e to, to 8 on the B. And then it's going to go um, to the 10th fret of the B, and then 8 to 9 slide on the G, to 8 on the B. So uh, that whole part. Now that's the part I was saying where there's a, it's a, it's a C7 sound, because you could see the minor to major third thing. So you could maybe add a little lick or something. Um, Whatever you want to do, or maybe um, come up with something that works for a C7 chord if you want. If you want to get a little cute about it. So there's that part. So this is the second time doing that. Real quick, the second time he doesn't do two slides, just one. Which is that's a weird note that, but it feels really good, doesn't it? Because it's in the F minor chord. And so this was that other part I was talking about. So then it goes. The next time it goes. Instead of just going to the eighth fret of the B, he's hitting the seventh fret of the G string and the eighth fret of the B string. And then he slides it up a minor third to the 10th fret of the G to the 11th fret of the B. And that's over, that's that altered G7 I was talking about where Johnny's just hitting the G7. So that last time. And now here, you hear that little bass note. This is on the steel guitar. So uh, Santo's playing. G, G, three G's on the third fret of the low E, and then he walks up third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret on the low E to the C. So this is how he does that part. And then he's he's going to repeat that. So that's what the that's what the high high guitar is doing. Same as the beginning. that note twice so that's um here it's just um sliding into the C with the fifth fret of this G string and the fifth fret of the B hit it twice and then back to your little lick. And then uh, Johnny hits the chords. So um, you hear Sano hitting a C, C at the end there. So that's it, a little painful. But now, at least for me, I have students asking me about this song a lot. I played this in Kevin M. Buck Band. Um, I get tired of having to relearn it, so it's a good idea for me to make this video so I could go back and watch this video. Uh, if you've made it all the way through this, um, thank you for watching. I'd like to thank all the people uh, that have subscribed to my page lately. I'll start making a bunch more videos since I see a little interest. Let me know if there are any things you want me to do, whether it's uh, guitar covers or uh, live videos, uh, gu guitar lessons. Uh, more comical videos. I'll do a bunch of different things on here. And um, yeah, thank you uh, very much for watching and uh, hit the like button if this has helped you. I hope, uh, hope this video gets to you. Thank you. Have a nice day.